Hey friends, welcome. And in this video, I am going to discuss about Baldwin's rules, right? So Baldwin's rule is very important, and uh, after this discussion, you will find why it is important. So before uh, doing, uh, before discussing a straightforward the rule, I would like to ask you a question. So what will be the product here? So this is your, this is a compound you are given, and uh, your reactants are sodium methoxide in methanol D. So what will be the product? So first of all, you are given with base. So you have to find acidic proton and you, you can find that there is acidic proton because it is adjacent to this carbonyl group. So your methoxide will take this proton to give you this enolate. right so you have this enolate now what uh, sorry 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 I did this test. so uh, this enolate you will get now what is the fate of this enolate so if you look carefully uh, first of all the, this is electron source so you have to find uh, some electron sink and you can see that when you push this negative charge here, it this bond can migrate here and this can open. Now alkoxides are not a good leaving group, but in this case the star, the push the electron from where it is pushing it is also alkoxide. So it is a reasonable leaving group and this type of reaction can occur because you know that ion CB reaction, this is a type of ion CB reaction, right? And in in your in your ion CB reaction the leaving groups are not generally good so if uh, hydroxide in your aldol condensation reaction hydroxide if hydroxide can be a leaving group then alkoxide can also be a leaving group and you will get this one right so you expect that this reaction you will get this uh, particular product but what happens actually is that you get when you do this reaction is in methanol D you will get this okay so it means that this deuterium incorporation means that after formation of this enolate it takes this proton from other methanol uh, methanol D molecules right so although this uh, enolate have forms but this step doesn't occur so why this is uh, so this looks perfectly fine uh, as our arrow pushing suggests right so but in reality the reaction doesn't occur and that's that is the case where you have to think about Baldwin's rule right so I will discuss this here why this reaction is not happening later by uh, when I uh, finish my discussion about Baldwin's rule but this is the start point of the Baldwin's rule right now uh, so let us so keep this example in your mind and now let us talk about Baldwin's rule so Baldwin's rule is about uh, how to tell a particular cyclization reaction is favored or disfavored right now there is a important point to note is that uh, I told you previously about the Woodward Hoffman rule regarding the pericyclic reactions. Now there is a fundamental difference between the Baldwin's rule and the Woodward Hoffman rule, right? Because Woodward Hoffman rules are fundamental rules. They are derived from theory. And uh, there is no exception of Woodward Hoffman rule, right? So it is a rule which is obeyed for every reactions. And for that the react the reactions which are not uh, which are not according to Woodward Hoffman rule, they are called unallowed or not allowed, and which follow them, th th these are called allowed. But the Baldwin's rule is not derived from your theory, it is derived from some experiments and some empirical results. So, in this case, we will say that a particular reaction is either favored or disfavored, it is not allowed or unallowed, right? So, there are many exceptions of the Baldwin's rule but nevertheless it is very important because when, when Baldwin's 
first published the paper on the Baldwin rule. The paper remains the most cited paper for almost 40 years. So from that you can imagine how important the rule was. Now let us uh, begin the discussion. So before discussing Baldwin's rule, you have to be familiar with few points. Like let's say this is your first reaction where you have a so let's see where O minus and here you have bromine, right? So this attacks here and you get this product. Okay. So first you have to number the atoms. So this is one, two, three. So this is a three membered ring. So first you have to uh, identify what is the number of the member. So this is member, ring member. So this is three member ring. So this is three. Now you have to nomenclature either it is exo or endo. So what is mean by exo or endo? So see this bond is breaking. Now if the bond, the bond which is breaking is outside the ring. So it is outside the ring. So that's why it is called exo. So bond breaking. Right. So bond which is breaking if it is outside then it is called exo. Now for this example, let's say let's say you have your uh, O minus here, and this is this is now reaction is uh, occurring like this. Okay. So now one, two. So we can uh, number one, two, three, four, five. This is forming a five member ring. Right. So in this case, you can see uh, this minus and this, this. Okay. So this is a five member ring. So the member is five. And now you can see the bond which is breaking. So this bond is breaking and it is inside the ring. Okay. So the bond which is undergoing breaking, it is inside the ring. So it is five endo. Right, and another example of exo is like uh, say this is your CO group and your so this, let's say this is your OME group and you have O minus, right? So now one, two, three, four, five. So it can attack here. Or you have, let's say you have OH in acidic medium you are doing so it will go as water. This is just a lactonization reaction and you will get a five member ring like this. Okay, so again this is a one, two, three, four, five. So this the member is five. Okay, because it is a uh, the five member ring is forming and in this case the you can see the bond breaking is. Uh, outside the ring, okay. So this bond is breaking. No, actually, this bond is not breaking. This bond is breaking, but that is also outside the ring. So it is also exo. So five exo. Now the another term which will come, and that is the hybridization or the type of the electrophile, right? So what is the type of the electrophile? So in this case, the electrophilic atom is this, and this is a tetrahedral center, right? It is hybridized with sp3, it is a tetrahedral center, and we say tet. This is a sp2 center, and it is a trigonal center. You can see it is a trigonal. sp2 means trigonal, and that's why it is called trig. Right? So, and in this case, it is a sp2, sp, sorry, sp, and this electrophilic center is diagonal, so it is called dig. Now, you can see this fancy nomenclature. You you must ask that why we should uh, do this nomenclature. But you will. Uh, but this is not our uh, like uh, luxury to nomen to give this nomenclature. But actually, when we have to uh, make a table of which reaction is favorable and which are uh, not, then this nomenclature will be very helpful. So you should first uh, understand the nomenclature, right? That then after that. You can uh, um, uh, learn the Baldwin rule, right? So uh, this is how the nomenclature is done. This is a three exo tail. This is five exo trig, and this is five endo trig. So endo or exo means the bond which is breaking. Is it inside the ring or is it outside the ring, right? 
now after that i will tell one rule and explain uh, the rule again right so first rule is that all exo tet are favored right so as you can see this let's say is a heterodont of x and you have a leaving group here say uh, so let's say you have oxygen here and you have a leaving group here any x leaving group okay so this is a 3 exo 3 exo tet now you can have a 4 exo tet or you can have a 5 exo tet so 3 4 5 all are exo tet and you can see that for this reaction what it has to do it has to just approach the lumo of this cx bond right so this is the lumo and irrespective of the member of the ring irrespective of the number from 3 to you can go any any number right so irrespective of the number the structure of this tetrahedral molecules or are uh, saturated molecules are such that they can orient themselves in such a way that this back side attack is always possible right so that's why all exo tet reactions are favored okay now this is the first rule so the second rule i want to tell is that all exo trig are also favored right so in this case also you can see it let's say this, let's say you have this case right and you can see this for this uh, o minus it is always possible to approach uh, this pi star orbital right so irrespective of the number of your member it is always possible to approach this uh, pi star orbital and that's why all your exo trig reactions are also favorable so our next rule is that 5 and 6 endo tet are this favored right and to show this one i have i will discuss a famous example so let's say this is your this is your compound and you are treating it with a base right so base what will do it will deprotonate this center because it is acidic due to the presence of this so2 group so it will generate a negative charge here and now you can uh, in your pen with your pen or pen and paper you can Uh, show this nice mechanism to generate this one so2 o minus and here you have this methyl now your so2 okay so this reaction looks perfectly fine and although it is not a ring formation reaction but we can Uh, uh take this as a so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 and ring is at the bond which is uh, breaking is we can say it is inside the ring because it is it uh, this total we can take as a ring and this is 6 endo trig sorry 6 endo tet right because this center is tetrahedral so this reaction looks fine but and this product you will get but actually this reaction doesn't for it is not intra molecular reaction because the sigma the sigma star orbital is here and this is a sn2 type reaction so this negative charge cannot approach behind this sigma star and this attack is not possible so what happens is that other molecule of this one will attack here so this is actually a inter molecular reaction and if you use the uh, here if you use uh, instead of uh, your so if, if you use a mixture of two reagents where you have one methyl group and uh, so 50% you used with methyl and 50% you used with cb3 
right so then what you will get you will end up a mixture of methyl and cd3 right but if the re uh, reaction was intramolecular then you don't expect to make uh, so you they, then you expect to make get 50 50 mixture of the two because uh, then the internal transfer of the cd3 will occur but in this case what you will get you will get uh, 25 percent with uh, both uh, methyl, methyl group and 25 percent with uh, both uh, both cd cd3 group and another 50 percent with mixture right so that means this is this crossover experiment proves that you cannot uh, this attack is not actually favorable and this is actually intramolecular attack so this proves that this five or six endotate reactions are not favored now move on to the so fourth rule is three four and five endotrig are disfavored Six and seven endo trig are favored. Right. So let us. Uh, this this is a this needs a good explanation, right? So why three, four, and five endo trig are disfavored, and six, seven endo trig are favored, right? So for that, we will take this example. Let's say you have this NH2 group here, and here you have this functional group, right? So now, uh, this nitrogen lone pair can attack here because it is conjugation, it is in conjugation with a carbonyl group, and you can get this cyclic product, right? So, this product will occur and you will get this OET right but actually it doesn't occur what happens is that your NH2 will uh, OET so this is your 1 2 3 4 5 so this is 5 endo trig and what happens is that it attacks here and you get this product okay so this is one two three four five so this is your five exotric and we say that all exotrig are favorable. So in this case also 5 exotrig is occurring, not 5 endotrig. So why this is not happening? Because uh, if you draw if you draw the molecule, let's say this is your plane and you have this alkene and this NH2 group, they are in plane, and then you have this pi star lobe. So this is so the lobe is uh, up above the plane and below the plane but this nitrogen lone pair is in the plane and you can see in 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 uh, in the plane there is a node this is a node okay so this nitrogen lone pair if it has to approach this pi star orbital it has to it has first uh, has to come above and then it can approach here but for this five member ring it is not possible so when you have a six member ring like this if you have a six member ring then it can be possible because the flexibility comes in your ring so this is why your um, five exotrig is not uh, five endotrig is not favorable right now let us come to the last of this class rule and that is you five is all endo dig are favored now this is a puzzling example uh, and the puzzling rule because most of the endo 
uh, three reactions are disfavored and in this case i am saying this that all endo d's are favored right so that means if you have this type of molecule let's say your o minus is here and you have this group so it is saying that it will attack here to give you this 1 2 3 4 5 so let's say this is a five member ring you are getting okay this is five endo d right so how can it be favorable i said that for your uh, let's uh, when it is like o minus just told where it was nh2 right i just told that for this reaction it is not favorable but uh, in this case i am showing example where you have a linear case and in the pen in the paper it is showing that it is it is far apart so in this case it is close proximate but it is far apart from your uh, far apart from your uh, oxygen negative negatively charged oxygen so how can it be favored again uh, if you just um, look at the structure you will be confused so you have to look at the molecular orbitals involved and if you draw a plane like this and then if you place your molecule here so your o minus is here and this is your triple bond right so you can see in this case also one orbital will be above the plane and below the plane but the other orbital will be in the plane because al alkynes has two set of pi orbitals now because of the orbital which is in the plane it can approach here right it cannot approach this orbital but it can, it can approach the orbital which is in in the plane and that's why your endo dig reaction is favorable all endo dig reactions are favorable so this uh, needs some more explanation and uh, i i will uh, finish this video here and in the next video i will discuss about some exceptions of the balduin's rule and more explanation of why these rules are so uh, why these rules are actually followed and what are the molecular orbital explanation deeper molecular orbital explanations of this rule so for for that you have to subscribe my channel and if you like the video then give a thumbs up so thank you for watching